I want to preface this video by saying that the creator of Woodville only had four days notice to polish their map for release and you shouldn't direct your hate at them, but rather at Valve for their poor work ethic and map choosing. That being said, Woodville is bad. It's rolled around to that time of year again when Valve has the obligatory duty of adding community content into the main game, also known as the end of the year. This time, Smithmas feels more like Scream Fortress because for the first time in TF2 history, Smithmas has added maps to the rotation pool, four of them to be exact, two of which are reskins of current maps, one of which which is great, and one of which is Woodville, but we'll get to that. First of all, let's talk cosmetics. This update brings with it a new cosmetic case containing 20 new cosmetics, most of which will never be worn after the holiday season ends, except the new face mask cosmetic, and okay, the pajamas are cool, as well as a new war paint case containing 13 new war paints, which all look pretty cool in my opinion. My personal favourite is the Frozen Aurora. This update also added 8 new taunts, which- wait, wait, 8? Eight new taunts? Eight? This is one of the things that threw me off most about this update, it almost seems like Valve cares. Especially when you consider that there were general changes to the game in this update too, including a long-standing MVM exploit, and some material fixes that I don't really understand what they mean, but I'm guessing this is the heavy update. The new taunts are pretty cool, the scout can skateboard now, making for some pretty algorithmically farmable content, the soldier rides a rocket now, giving off Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare vibes as he does it, and the engineer rides a freaking tractor. The only thing I don't really love are the new sitting taunts for demo and medic, like it just seems like they've been given sitting taunts for the sake of having sitting taunts, but Pyro's new piano taunt is cute, so there's that. And the fist bump is a fun alternative to the high five. So, let's talk maps, which is, as I say, a little unusual because Smithmas doesn't usually add maps, other than changing some pre-existing maps to have pretty lights around. But I do hope Pier stays in, not only because it's a pretty great payload map with lots of fun flanking opportunities, fun easter eggs and quips, like with the signs that are dotted around, and a gorgeous art style that makes me sad we never got the frontline update, but it also has absolutely nothing to do with winter or the festive holidays, like it's set at a beach for goodness sake, so it does seem like the intention is to keep this map around once Smithmas Christmas ends, but I kinda doubt that. Fun map, definitely the best of the bunch, although there's not a lot of competition. Snowfall is an absolutely gorgeous reskin of the pre-existing CTF map, Landfall. It's cosy, it's got a little snowman around, these candy cane textures are broken for me for some reason, and I like the little touch of adding a star on top of the enormous tree in the center. This map, like all the others added in this update actually, is set at night time, adding quite a bit of wintry atmosphere, which in my opinion makes the games a lot more relaxed and laid back, like you're celebrating Christmas with the other players, you know? Snowville is another beautiful reskin, this time of the King of the Hill map, Sawmill. However, this Mismus variant is not a Koth map, but a player destruction map. A pretty underplayed game mode, so it's nice to see it getting some recognition. In this map, you deliver presents that you get from killing players to the magical pyrobot-led sleigh seriously, what is this thing? that lands in various sites around the map, some of which aren't even accessible by most of the classes for some reason. There are some cool changes to the map that distinguish it from Sawmill. The Aurora Borealis that lights up the sky is absolutely stunning to look at, and I like the fact that you can stand on this lake now that it's been frozen over, but still dive through the broken ice and even retrieve a health kit, making for a good escape route from those pesky pyros. Overall, very solid maps, and I'm going to be sad when all these maps go. I really think the community has outdone themselves in style this year. There's something about these maps that makes them feel real cozy and relaxing to play on, emphasised by the fact that they'll be gone in a month's time, so you should enjoy them while you can. Enjoy them. All three of them. Three maps. No more. No more have been added. Come on man, this map has been talked about to death by now. Everyone in TF2 knows that this map is a strong contender for worst map ever added to the game. They already know that it's ridiculously art style encroaching and has the overall style of a community trade map. They know that it's poorly optimised and has the entire map rendered at once, leading to insane frame drops for most players. They even know about the abysmal sniper sight lines and the discouraging of any classes that can't traverse long and open distances quickly, and the broken collision detection that extends far past the visual look of a wall or in some cases doesn't have collision entirely, and the ridiculously campable spawns, and the slew of bugs like the train disappearing or being able to place sentry guns under the map, and the weird clashing of styles from giant underground sewage pipes to a Dr. Seuss land of poorly textured buildings that feels like the equivalent of having glass shards shoved in your eyes. 
So the map isn't great. I've heard people comparing it to chill trade maps and having fun on it because it's so bad it's good, but imagine this map being the first game someone plays, which I suspect is the case from the teams I've been matched with lately. This map so sorely contradicts the style and feel of every other map in the game that it almost feels like it was added as a practical joke. It's confusing, inconsistent, ugly, and I hate to say it, but no amount of fixes to this map will actually fix it. But you can't blame the developer. As I said at the start, the developer has come out and said that they only had four days from the initial email to reach the Smithmas deadline and get their map included, meaning they had to boot up this old map that they hadn't worked on in a long time and may not have even been made with the intention of having it one day being added and polish what they could and what little time they had. This is not the developer's fault, it's Valve's. They should have taken more than a 5 second glance at this map and known that it wasn't even close to ready for release. Like did whatever poor sap that was put in charge of this update not even play this map? It genuinely baffles me that they would even consider adding Woodville in its current state, especially with so many other far better quality winter appropriate maps on the workshop already, literally any of which would have been exceedingly better than Woodville. The only fun I have ever had on this map was laughing out of shock at how bad it was, and how poor of a choice it was to include it. Congratulations Valve, you've outdone yourself with this one. Despite that one map selection leaving a bad taste in my mouth, this update has been pretty cool. Although like most updates we've been getting recently, there was little to no input from Valve, this shift towards adding community content on a regular basis is actually giving me a little hope for the future of TF2. And maybe, one day, the community can assume more control over the direction of the game, even though I'm still holding out hope for a major update from Valve, whenever they decide to come back to TF2. And you know what, as long as we get these regular community content updates, I'm willing to wait for it. Cheerio. Extra special thank you to Ender and Alphonse101 for the very generous Patreon subscriptions. My Patreon and Discord are both in the description, whether you feel like supporting me or coming along and chatting with me and other fans of the channel.